this is my story. The year was 2000. I was 10. The picture wasn't when I was 10, but yeah. I was <laughs> in my level 5, grade 5 as they call it, selected to represent the entire grade in a debate competition. Was supposed to go in front of at least 500 people on a speech topic called Spare the Rod, Spoil the Child. I prepared for it, researched my topic, came up with a two-page script, rehearsed it again and again and again. On the day itself, I was tense. I, I kept telling my mom, I'm so nervous, mom. I'm very nervous. And she kept telling me, it's okay, you've done enough, have faith in God. Just pray to God. All right? And one hour before, I told her the same thing, and she said, just pray to God. So for those Hindus, I, I, you would know, I, I read the Hanuman Chalisa, you know, it's going out at least 15 times, 20 times before I ran out, chanted. And that was when I had strong faith in God. After the speech was the first time I stopped believing in God. <laughs> I, had, I had hanged in the most spectacular fashion. I had kept saying, spare the rod, spoil the child, spare the rod, spoil the child, in front of 500 people at least 20 times before I realized enough was enough and I went down. And that was my first ever public speaking failure. I grew up. I uh, went into my, <laughs> I became a teenager, as you can see the smile was still in a work in progress and I, I, I mean when I was 16, I had the first chance of being thrust into a leadership position. I was elected, or sort of elected, or more like as a class chairperson, yeah? And now the, the responsibilities were not just the administrative kind, but you're supposed to lead the class in uh, aspects such as when you're supposed Chinese New Year decoration, or uh, we had a concert coming up, I'm supposed to leave the class. And every single crucial point of time, whenever a decision is needed to be made, I would just go MIA. I would, whenever a teacher would come in, so what's, what's your decision on this? I, I wouldn't know what to say, I would look around for, the, for my VP or my secretary. And that was my first ever failure as a leader. And, that, and at that point of time, I used to think to myself, look, I can't speak well, I can't lead well, what, what, what am I going to do? And I would always think to myself, you know what, I'm still a good student. Yeah, I, would, I was always in the top three of my class. I would always get the grades that I wanted. So hey, all I have to do is get into NUS, I'll be in one of the best universities in the world. People would listen to me then. Because they were listening to me back in my school, so they would listen to me because I'm from the one of the best universities in the world. Barely five years later, I entered SIM. Yeah, so that was what? Yeah, so that was me. And Photoshop. No, it wasn't Photoshop. That was me after a six-month period where I was gymming almost every day, uh, and I, I had. But at, okay, this was after I had entered SIM, right? So as I entered SIM, I, I kind of knew it was all over. It was really all over. I had nothing going on for me. Just come out of a bit of a depression, depressive state. And people, I mean, people were telling me, look dude, I mean, it's SIM, what are you gonna do? And I, I tried to look at the positive things, way of things, and uh, my friends would tell me, you know, this is the final chapter of what is supposed to be the most exciting phase of your life. You know, student life, final chapter, of what? You're, you're gonna have some exciting memories. So at that point of time, I, I stood and, and I thought to myself, what are the most exciting memories of my life and up until that point? O-level results, I did okay, got into a good GAC, not a big deal. Army, I was just following orders, man. It was nothing exciting. And then I thought and thought and thought and only one memory popped up. And that was um, when I was 14, I was in my room, dark corner, I was typing away on my Google, uh, on my uh, Internet Explorer a website that my friend had just told me about. I press enter. You need to be 18 to enter this site. <laughs> and I agree and go. Oh. <laughs> was. I mean, honestly, I entered SI with the most exciting memory being the first time I watched porn. <laughs> that was that was me. <laughs> Entering SIM. I had no idea what I was going to do. I, I had basically nothing going on. I, I, know even, I look at all you guys, I know why you're laughing, and I know why you're smiling to yourself. Exciting point. And, and at that point of time, I, 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 I realized that, okay, I had to get things straight. Yeah? I had to make sure I make the most of the remaining two and a half, three years of my life. 
supposed to be the most exciting chapter of my life. I want to make it the most exciting chapter of my life. Yes, I had to study. I had to make sure I get the grades. It's, uh, it's like a bare minimum kind of thing. But how, what, what am I going to do when I go to, w into the workforce? In the interview, they ask me, so what's your strength? Oh, I was strong academically. What the hell are you in that time for? Right? It's not going to make sense. So I, I knew I had to get a good CCA. I had to join uh, a CCA and I started looking for CCAs straight up. Uh, and I joined a bunch of clubs. Um, I think I joined which side was Symes, the first club to, to join. Then I joined Yen. I joined a lot of different societies. And finally, I came to Toastmasters because they told me they had free food. <laughs> yeah, I saw the free refreshments would be provided. All guests are welcome. And I, I came down and I suddenly felt at home. Primarily because it was one of the few CCAs where I, I could understand whatever was happening around me. Everybody spoke in English, even though they're all from different countries, everybody spoke in English. And I loved that about this club. And I settled in really quickly. I gave my project one, gave my project two, was the best speaker for both the projects. I felt good about myself. And at that point of time, I, 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 I remember I was speaking to my friends and I was like, hey, you know what? I think I want to be president of this club. Three months in, you know. <laughs> Three months in, I'm like, I, I think I want to be the president of this club. Coxter, I was a real idiot thinking that I could be the president of a club because at that point of time, I thought that the only thing that SM Students Toastmasters was was a public speaking club. It's just a club at SIMCCA. Was what's the thing that needs to be done? I mean, uh, I remember all you had to do was two chapter meetings. The club was very different back then. Uh, two chapter meetings, uh, have a club outing, and, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, what could be so difficult? Everything changed when Junior League contest, uh, sorry, humorous speech contest of 2013. I remember that was the first time my friend Sari was giving his speech, first P1. But there was one other contestant called Wilson. He came up, hunched, and uh, he, he came up uh, in front of everyone. He, he didn't even look in front, he just looked down. And he said, hey guys, my name is Wilson, and this is the first time I'm speaking to a large bunch of people. And he told us about how he had social anxiety issues that were so severe that he had to be homeschooled from primary school till he came to SIM. And he had such massive self-confidence issues that he could never speak to a bunch of people. And for the first time ever, he felt that he was in a club that enabled him to, to look up and to speak to a, to a larger group. And as he was saying it, he started crying. Bear in mind, it was a humorous speech contest, you know. <laughs> and he was saying those things, and uh, at that point, everybody was shell shocked. I was the only idiot down there. <laughs> 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 I think he was trolling us, you know. And, and I kept, I kept, you know, making fun. I was looking around, and everyone was giving me like the death stare. I'm like, stop laughing, idiot. <laughs> and, and that's when I, I, I realized it's not a public speaking club. This isn't a club that just enables you to go out there and be all glorified and uh, make speeches. It was a club that really got you that confidence that I believe many of us lose when we walk through the doors in SRM. And for Wilson, it was that opportunity to actually do something he had never done in his life before. And that was the first time I realized Toastmasters is more than a public speaking club. Okay, that was, that was in Junior League. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, Hebrew speech. Moving on, I started attending more chapter meetings. I knew I wanted to get to the Exco. And I, I attended suppers all the time. I love suppers. I was the most talkative guy. I was the most happening guy in supper. I was talking, hey, what else? And, and I was always talking to every single person. And it was so fun uh, going for suppers and everything. I remember one supper, during one supper, uh, I, uh, my granddad was, uh, was ill for quite some time, for, for almost five years. My parents had gone overseas to take care of him. And he, he was a fighter. He would always pull through. One supper, I received a message. Your granddad has passed away. Call back. During supper, and uh, I was shocked. I went out, spoke to my parents. I came back. I just wanted to cry. I just wanted everything to end. I just wanted to break down and just. Because that was one man I wanted to meet for almost six years. I hadn't seen him. He was one of the idols of my life. And he had just passed away. And this goddamn club just wouldn't let me be sad. This damn club would get, I mean, when I was there, shell shock. I remember, I don't remember who, he would come and talk to me, hey dude, you just won your best evaluator ribbon for your first ever evaluation, how was it? And everybody was, was, would come and tell me about why, why they felt that uh, my speech was good. And it was, it was th then that I realized this club wasn't a club. 
this club has become a family. A family away from my family. And with that, thing, one thing led to Yana, I became the president. And my visions to be the president were very simple. I knew I had to make sure that this club remains the family that it was for me, and that it remains what I felt was the best CCA that I could ever join. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. And, and this is why I would like to say I found my family and this was my story. And when you end your journey in SIM, I want you to look back and think about what you've done and ask yourself, what's your story? Back to you. Thank you.